Hi, this is Patrick Coffin with a thought about teens and how to reach teens with the gospel message. The teen years are what C.S. Lewis calls the dark ages of every life. It's a time of uh, confusion and um, emotional instability, or I should say emotionally pyrotechnic. Uh, but teens have a high ideal. They're very passionate. They're very committed. Once they're in, they're all in. And there's a a uh, long list of saints who were teenagers from Blessed Chiara Badano to Dominic Savio to uh, some of the, the youth saints in the Cristero Wars, um, St. Joan of Arc, St. Maria Goretti. So teens, by and large, need to be told what's in it for them. This is the big practical question that most teens ask about anything in life. And teens have a pretty sensitive BS detector. They can kind of tell when adults are being well-meaning but they don't really buy their own shtick. And so if you can communicate the gospel message in a way that resonates with what's in it for them, longer life, happier existence, better relationships with uh, their parents and the opposite sex, sense of peace, I was going to say comfort but that's not the right way to put it. Um, in fact, the gospel often delivers discomfort and discord. We're not supposed to fit into this world. And this is a really great avenue into the teen mind. The idea that, that being a follower of Jesus Christ means that you are a rebel. So you can tap into that spirit of uh, being against you know, forces of darkness or intolerance or uh, evil or um, any institution that would stifle thought. And from there, it's a short step to explaining that the Catholic Church is the greatest patron of science and free human inquiry in history. That most of the great scientists, above average number, were serious Catholics, often priests, clerics, cardinals. Um, teens have a, a mantra. My dad used to call it the three eyes. Teens feel like they're invincible, immortal, and infallible. They don't have a sense of urgency with life. Uh, unless they've had a, grand, a grandparent or you know a distant relative die, they don't really have a close-up experience with death. They don't have that sense of the brevity of life and how, how fast and how fragile life can be. Um, and that's deceptive. Uh, part of the reason that teens have this invincible, immortal, and, and infallible mantra going on in their heads is that our culture teaches them that, that they are random products of um, the Darwinian evolution. We're basically electric meat. Our bodies, so our culture says, are blank slates. Uh, they're instruments. We can write on them with tattoos. We can uh, shove metal objects in our nose, in our eyelids, in our lips, in our navels. We can uh, add on body parts, lop them off. Gender, ah, whatever, that's a bendy social construct. Um, we can have plastic surgery, at least the wealthy ones, for, for the most ridiculous imperfections on normal looking bodies. So, teens are up against a lot. But, you know what? When they are in, they, they can set on fire and they can end up evangelizing not only their peers, but adults as well. You just need to find the right avenue into the teenage heart and mind.